What's up, fight fans? Welcome back to Sports Key to MMA News. Amanda Nunes explains why Kayla Harrison was part of the reason she left the American top team. Daniel Cormier doesn't really know why Tony Ferguson has beef with him. Charles Oliveira says the UFC is not to blame for his title being taken away. Marvin Vittori is left with no choice but to wait for Robert Whittaker. And a super fight between MMA legends Junior Dos Santos and Fedor Emelianenko could be in the works. All this and more on today's edition of Sports Kida MMA News. If you see your favorite fighters mentioned in today's video, make sure to blast that like button. On that note, let's begin today's roundup. Judging by their social media interactions, one would assume that Amanda Nunez and Kayla Harrison are the best of friends. Despite long-standing rumors that the MMA superstars are inevitably going to fight at some point, the two remain to be cordial and supportive of each other in their posts. However, this apparently wasn't the case behind closed doors. In fact, the Lioness admitted that the two-time Olympian gold medalist was part of the reason she left American Top Team. Appearing as a guest on Troca Cal Franca, MMA Fighting's Portuguese language podcast, Nunes revealed that she was never comfortable with the presence of Kayla Harrison and Yana Kuniskaya in her gym to begin with. This is what the former women's bantamweight champ had to say. There were no girls when I got to American Top Team. I was the first woman to bring two belts and put the women's team in history. When Kayla got there and then Kuniskaya, it began creating a weird situation for me because that was my territory. And then Kayla started talking. I was kind of, man, I'm not safe even in my territory. I was kind of cornered, even because we share the same coaches. She trains with Mike Brown and I train with Mike Brown. I was already training with them when she got there. Nunez left ATT to form her own team following her monumental loss to Juliana Pena at UFC 269. The Brazilian is currently gearing up for a rematch against the Venezuelan Vixen, with the two appearing on the latest season of The Ultimate Fighter as opposing coaches. As for her highly anticipated dream match with Harrison, that will have to wait. The American judoka penned a multi-fight deal with the PFL earlier this year, meaning a Nunes vs Harrison matchup won't be happening anytime soon. Was leaving ATT a wise decision for Nunes? Let us know what you think, leaving a comment down below. The former heavyweight and light heavyweight champ doesn't really understand why Tony Ferguson is after him, just because of his friendship with Habib Nurmagomedov. Ferguson recently took a dig at Cormier on Twitter, saying that the UFC should have stripped him of the title for missing weight, as they did with Charles Oliveira. DC advised Tony to settle down, but it was apparent that El Kikoi woke up and chose violence that day. The two went back and forth, with Ferguson having the last word. Ever the gentleman, Cormier tried to clear the air with Ferguson on an episode of DC and the RC show. Here's what the future Hall of Famer had to say. But it's like, he has these issues with Habib, and it, it, because of these issues with Habib, he continues to come at me, which I don't quite understand. When you're losing the way that he did, bro, you gotta go away for a little bit, man. Like, take some time, like, recover, like, get your mind, get your mind back in a place where you can go and compete effectively, instead of trying to fight with the guy that commentates the fight. Ferguson, of course, has been entangled in a long-standing feud with Cormier's buddy, Habib. The pair were booked to fight on five separate instances, but ended up being cancelled for one reason or another. This asks the question, had Tony Ferguson and Habib Nurmagomedov fought in their primes, who would have won? Fans, fighters and media members came to Charles Oliveira's defense after the Brazilian was stripped of the UFC lightweight title due to a botched weight cut. Journalist Ariel Helwani even went as far as providing three separate times UFC champions missed weight ahead of their title fights but was spared the consequences. According to Helwani, Daniel Cormier, Habib Nurmagomedov, and George St. Pierre all missed weight before, but the UFC turned a blind eye to their offenses. Oliveira, however, made it a point to shift the blame from the UFC to the Arizona State Athletic Commission. During an interview with Brazilian legends, Du Bronx clarified who's to blame for the fiasco. Here's what the former champ had to say. I think the UFC is not to blame. I think it's actually the Athletic Commission which is responsible for weigh-ins, right? I hit the weight on Thursday on the UFC scale, so that scale was changed, was removed, right? Nevertheless, Oliveira earned the right to compete for the vacant lightweight crown when he submitted Justin Gaethje in the main event at UFC 274. 
The Brazilian is now on an unbeaten streak in his last 11 fights, with recent wins over the likes of Gaethje, Dustin Poirier and Michael Chandler. He was also given his pay-per-view points, although Dana White admitted that same perks may not apply for his next fight. Do you think Charles Oliveira still deserves to be the UFC lightweight champ? More importantly, who do you think he should fight next for the belt? Top middleweight contenders Robert Whittaker and Marvin Vittori were supposed to throw down at UFC 275 in June. It was a matchup that made sense since Whittaker and Vittori are kind of in the same boat. Both men are talented middleweights who are arguably in their primes. Both have beaten most of their fellow middleweight contenders and both were styled on by the champion Israel Adesanya twice. Unfortunately, it was announced that the matchup was off after Whittaker suffered an undisclosed injury. Addressing his supporters on social media, this is what Bobby Knuckles had to say. Sorry to say guys, due to an injury I took early in the camp, I'm not able to compete in June. I did everything I could to get it right, but it's not healing on time. All this means is that I'll be back in the octagon a couple of months later and I'll be better than ever. Then again, Vittori says that won't be an issue. It appears that the Italian dream was left with no choice but to wait for Whitaker, as he's apparently stuck in matchmaking limbo. Taking to Twitter, here is what Vittori had to say. Alright, so I guess since I can't find an opponent any earlier, I'm fighting Whitaker in Paris. You better show that up this time. Let's do it. I've been waiting for too long now. Earlier this month, the UFC announced that it's bringing the world-famous Octagon to France for the first time as the company continues to break into new markets. Reports suggest that the event is to be main evented by a showdown between former interim UFC champ and hometown hero Cyril Gann and rising star Taito Ivasa. Which matchups would you want to see added to the UFC Paris card? Chime in with your thoughts in the comments section. Habib Nurmagomedov is apparently eyeing a Junior Dos Santos vs Fedor Emelianenko dream match as his promotion's next big fight. The Dagestani recently teased a potential clash between the two heavyweight icons during the Eagle FC 47 presser. However, Habib acknowledged that some inter-promotion magic is needed to pull off such a huge matchmaking move. Dos Santos, of course, competes under the Eagle FC banner, while Fedor has been a mainstay in Bellator for the past several years. With that being the case, Habib would need the cooperation of one Scott Coker. Here's what Habib had to say. If Dos Santos wins, I really want to make Dos Santos vs Fedor fight, but I want to talk with my friend Scott Coker because Fedor is under Bellator contract. I don't know what they're going to do next with him, but definitely we can talk and we can do something. We can create some good story. Why not? Because these two was longtime face of MMA. Fedor was the greatest fighter of all time in my opinion, and Dos Santos was heavyweight champion couple of years in UFC. These two guys, they deserve, and fans deserve, and I think, for me, it's a very interesting matchup too. Coker appears to be interested to learn more about Habib's pitch. The Bellator CEO hopped on Twitter to ask Habib for a meeting, although he made it clear that dinner's on the former UFC champ. For now though, Dos Santos is set to face Jorgen Di Castro at Eagle FC 47. It will be Sagano's first fight back since his devastating TKO loss to Cyril Gann at UFC 256 back in 2020. Are you Team JDS or Team Fedor? That about does it for Sports Kida MMA news. Here are some of the best comments from today. Love both of these warriors. Gilbert a little more than Hamzat, but Himaev is the real deal. I want either one of these warriors to fight Colby Covington. Fireworks in the making, plus both can beat him. Islam is better off leaving UFC. He thinks he earned it, but he really hasn't. Fought two people who were under peak conditions and ducked RDA. Covington's just unlucky he's in the Usman era. If you like this video, please like, comment and share. Your comments could be featured in the next Sports Kida MMA News video. We always deliver daily content, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything going on in the MMA world. For updates, quotes, and exclusive interviews from all your favorite fighters, follow Sports Key to MMA on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching.